we're rapidly approaching the end of 1986, and something we haven't been seeing a lot of lately on the Famicom are these basic arcade games. We've entered an era where greater and greater complexity is being demanded from games. And Buggy Popper feels a little bit out of time. As an arcade game, it predates even the Famicom. It was released in 1982 and was a modest success. In the US, the arcade game was called Burning Rubber, though by the time home ports came along, they were called Bump and Jump. And as a 1982 arcade game, Buggy Popper is really simple. Your girlfriend has been kidnapped, and you have to drive along a series of courses in order to rescue her. You press up to accelerate, and A sends your car flying. All the cars on the road are out to get you, and you'll need to either dodge them, ram them into the side of the road, or land on top of them. I've generally found that landing on top of them is the best choice, especially since there's a lot of vehicles that can't be rammed. You get knocked around a little bit too much when you try to bump into people, but landing on top of them knocks them out cleanly. You'll see this symbol flash at the top of the screen, and that tells you that there's a break in the road coming up that you'll need to jump over. One odd quirk in Buggy Popper is that the roads are more like suggestions. They're where the cars will spawn, but you can drive on almost any flat surface. So on some stages it's possible to jump out of bounds and drive for a while safely away from the other vehicles. However, you do have limited gas, and you'll have to pick up more gas cans on the course. The gas cans are Buggy Popper's weakest gameplay aspect. They don't spawn randomly on the road, they spawn randomly wherever. So it's pretty common to see them appear in places where you can't collect them. The strangest pickup is this spark plug. Running into it sends you into this cutscene where your car gets repaired. Except your car doesn't take damage. So all it's really doing is giving you a little bit of fuel. When you get to the end of the track, you get a bonus for the number of cars you've knocked out, and then it's on to the next course. There's 16 courses in all, and Buggy Popper is actually one of the more challenging Famicom games to complete. You're so fragile, the action is so frantic, and some of the jumps are so nasty that the game can wind up being downright cruel. However, there is a continue code. When it says game over, hold select on controller 1 and press A and B on controller 2. Then when you start the next time, you'll start at the last stage you reached. Watch out for those larger vehicles. A lot of them drop things behind them. The dump trucks and bulldozers can drop a load of rocks in front of you, while these tankers can dump oil in the road. And that's everything there is to Buggy Popper. Like I said, as an early arcade game, it's pretty simple. It's actually a game I enjoy a lot. It's a pretty good reproduction of the arcade game. And yeah, I'm probably never going to actually beat it, but I enjoy sitting down and playing it for 15 or 20 minutes every once in a while. I think it's my favorite Data East game on the system, though that's kind of a low bar.